Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews and we're starting today's video by taking a look at the new Filmora 12. The latest update of Filmora brings a lot of new features that you will love. This is an easy to use cross-platform video solution for content creators. And now with the new update, it has some amazing features like the enhanced keyframes. Now, previously you could put keyframes on things like size, position, or rotation. Now with Filmora 12, you can put keyframes on pretty much anything like color, tint, brightness, or exposure. Another great new feature, the draw masking. You can pretty much draw a free form and mask anything you want on a video. And then we have the new adjustment layers. Now this is amazing. Anytime you wanna apply different effects to all of the clips that you have on your project, you just add the adjustment layer and you can apply effects there. And of course, all the other clips that you have on your timeline will have the same effects. And of course, there's a lot more. Filmora is very easy to use, but it also has a lot of powerful functions. There are a ton of built-in templates such as text, overlays, filters that will help you make an amazing edit to your video. Of course, you have the editing tools, split the screen, motion tracking, the screen recorder, keyframing, speed ramping, and all that. You have different effects for green screen, mask and blend, AR portrait, and all that stuff. And of course, the color edit, match colors, color correction, and all that stuff that you need to make a perfect video. Go ahead and give it a try by checking the link right down below in the description of the video. And today we're taking a look at 12 of the most common mistakes that iPhone users make on daily basis. Take a look at this list and make sure that you don't make any of these mistakes on your device. First of all is low power mode and the way people use low power mode. You know that when your device drops under 20%, your device will give you the option to turn on low power mode. And that's how it works. When your device is on low battery, you turn it on, it gives a few more minutes of battery life, but not use it when you have enough battery on your iPhone. I've seen a lot of people turn on low power mode and use it like that even though they have enough battery on their device that will make your iphone work slower the internet will be slower everything will be slower on your iphone that way you will have a way worse experience always make sure that you only use low power mode when you know that you don't have enough battery until you go and charge your iphone next up is a newer feature that apple has added with ios 16.1 go to settings app store and you will find here in app content this is a great feature. Make sure you have this turned on. What it does, it will have an app ready for you when the app needs to download in-app content because this will download it as soon as you have the app installed on your device. So when you open the app and you want to use it, you will have everything ready. So make sure you use this. You will have a way better experience using your apps. The next mistake probably a lot of people have made is sending live photos to someone via AirDrop or iMessage. When you send a photo, a live photo, it's actually not a picture. It is a small video file. As we know, it can actually even be converted into a video from here and it also has a sound so you want to make sure you just send the picture not that live photo that video file what you want to do before sending it make sure that you tap on live right there and turn it off that way you're not sending a live photo you're just sending a simple photo to someone without the video file and without the sound and when it comes to photos and videos using raw photo and ProRes are just some of the biggest mistakes that you can do on your device. Head on to your phone, to your camera settings and go to formats right here. So what you want to do is make sure that you don't capture raw photos. Make sure you have that turned off or ProRes. Now taking raw photos will just eat up the space on your iPhone. When you take a normal photo with your iPhone, it will probably like take about two to four megabytes, taking pro, pro raw photos will take a lot, sometimes even more than 100 megabytes per picture. You probably don't even need that. So unless you're a professional photographer, you need that, you can do that of course, but for just simple pictures, always make sure you have pro raw turned off and for videos, turn off pro res. Next up, we're talking about apps and updating apps. 
Having your apps not up to date is one of the worst mistakes you can, you can do on your iPhone, especially when you update your iPhone to a newer iOS version and just leave the apps not updated. That's a really big mistake. Now, apps are always updated, of course, with new features and fixes and all that. And of course, being compatible with the newest iOS softwares. So always make sure, especially after you update your iPhone to a newer iOS version, always make sure to head on to the app store and check your apps and make sure that you have all of them updated. Now with the release of the new iOS 16.2, we also have a new feature when it comes to updates. It is called security updates and this is a new feature that Apple has tested with the beta versions of iOS 16.2. Basically, these are updates that are separated from iOS versions. These are just security fixes and things like that. So you head on to general, go to software update and make sure you always use this right here security responses and system files always make sure that you update these files and of course always make sure that you have this enabled just in case you forget to update manually that will happen automatically always make sure that you install these security responses because they are really really important and always have fixes for a lot of bugs and security flaws that ios has and when it comes to updates and installing iOS software on your iPhone, installing a beta on your iPhone is really not a good idea if you do it on your daily driver. So if you have a spare iPhone and you just want to try the new features of the new iOS versions, you can do that, but always you will have a worse experience using a beta than of course a public release of iOS. So sometimes we get some betas that have some really exciting features. A lot of people just want to jump in and install their betas. I suggest you don't do it. You will actually have a way worse experience than just installing the public beta of iOS. Or if you just want to always do it and you just want to try the new features first, make sure that you at least wait for the public beta and then try it out. And we're moving on to Face ID and Passcode. And these are some features here that a lot of people never even take a look at and they should because these are really important. Scroll down here and you will find a section that says allow access when locked. So all of these things right here can be accessed on your iPhone even though your iPhone is locked with a face ID and passcode. Starting from the notification center to the control center and now the new live activities as well and also the lock screen widgets of iOS 16. People can actually use these on your iPhone even though your device is locked, as long as you have these turned on. Then you will have Siri, you have wallet, return missed calls. Someone can return a missed call on your iPhone with a phone locked, you don't wanna do that. And also reply with message, that's really bad. So make sure you go ahead and turn this off, especially the calls, the messages, live activities, and also lock screen widgets. The next mistake a lot of people make is use a lot of home screen widgets. Now, when you update your phone or you get a new phone, you will get a lot of widgets here. On this side where probably no one uses this anymore so this used to be like a side where you have the all style widgets on ios now you will have here like 10 different home screen widgets that will be enabled by default on ios make sure you always go ahead and remove those you probably never take a look at them and don't even need most of them you can see i don't have anything here they are always using of course cpu power they're using your network and consuming battery as well because they need to be updated. And also the same goes for the home screen. Don't just add home screen widgets that they just look cool. Just add the ones that you need because they always, as I said, consuming CPU power, battery and network as well. Next up is using bad apps. What is a bad app? It is an app that is poorly coded and will just drain the battery out of your iPhone. You notice sometimes when you install the apps, most of the times these will be games. You go to the battery section right here and you will see that you have used that app maybe for way less time than the other apps, but it has taken a lot of battery out of your iPhone. Make sure that you always delete those apps and of course find better replacements on the app store. Now we talked about betas and I suggest you guys you don't install betas on your daily driver. Now a lot of people don't actually, now they just don't install betas, they don't even install the public releases of iOS. I, I can bet you guys that if out of 10 phones right now, if you take a look at 10 phones, maybe of your friends, of your family, most of them will not have the latest iOS update 
on their device and that's really really bad you actually have an option to do that automatically doing it by yourself manually is not a lot of work you just have to tap two buttons but a lot of people don't actually do it make sure that you always have your ios software updated to the latest version that's really really important and last but not least is not using and not having on your device the apple support app every iphone user should have this app i don't know why apple doesn't make this a default app that comes pre-installed on your iphone but it's really really good and you will actually use it a lot so right at the top here you will see your devices you will have support tools here and all the different services and all that so if you tap on one of your devices you can take a look here at the performance of the device the updates and backups repairs and all that stuff so basically you can take a look at everything that has to do with your device more importantly battery life now with battery life this is interesting when you go to your iphone and you check out the battery health of your iphone that's really not the correct battery health because that's that percentage will only update when you update your device with this app you can just tap on check now and it will check the actual battery health of your device and give you the exact response now this is the exact battery health that you have on your device not the one that you see on the settings and you will have here basically like any response you need for any problems that you might have on your iPhone, starting from the cameras, the microphone, the Bluetooth, anything you need, you can go ahead and check for a solution right here. So that is it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go ahead and leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for more. I will see you on the next one.